Okay, so when I found out I had a problem, I was actually working. I had graduated for a year and uh, it was, I just started feeling very tired, you know. I, I would throw up sometimes and it wasn't consistent, you know. So I knew I had something wrong when I, getting out of bed was very hard, you know. I couldn't even, I didn't have energy to get out of bed. This was about two weeks before I found out I had uh, kidney failure. So went to a doctor, looked around, and the doctor thought I had uh, ulcers because of the, the throwing up, and I don't, you don't have appetite at all. So when I went and I was diagnosed, they took a blood test, and that's when a doctor called me, and the doctor told me that uh, there's something very wrong with your electrolytes. Come out to find out the potassium and the phosphorus were very high, out of spec, so that's when they suspected my, my kidney. Well, I was rushed to the hospital that day. I had to get, uh, it's called a, a catheter to do dialysis. But then the transplant from when I found out was about a, a year and a half. Yes, I got my transplant last year in uh, November, November 2016. Yes, first of all, it's, it's very expensive and you need to find that. But then also finding a donor is not easy. A donor who matches and is willing to donate. Is, is quite a challenge so the fact that my sister actually she told me she wanted to donate and when we did the test and found out that we could it was it was very it was a happy day for me i would do anything for her at this point if she needed anything i would do it just because before we were friends but then now that i have a part of her keeping me alive and keeping me healthy it, it takes it to another level it's, it's sacrificial love, that's the best way to put it. Wow, how yeah. much was it? Because you know at the same time you have to think about dialysis. He was on dialysis for a year, year and, and a half, half. Yeah. and then talking about he was in the States. Yes. So I actually went to the States, we thought we were going to have the surgery there, then we moved back home then we moved to India. to India where we actually had the surgery so all of it cumulatively maybe what wow. roughly four million maybe well, but the, the surgery itself was 1.7 yeah and then everything else in there we spent about three million, three million. The, the living costs and transport ET everything was about three million <laughs> Well, as she said, uh, it was discovered in the States. So, the States, getting a transplant is very expensive. So, we decided to come here and go to India because India had the expertise and it was cheaper. So, that's why we kind of moved around a bit. But then, if I was here, I would have just gone to India straight. Imagine, no, because... Um, We've always been very close ever since we were young. Um, in fact, when my mom was pregnant with me, she used to pray that she was having twins. So when she found out that I wasn't a twin, that's when our age gap is about a year. So we're very, very tight. So it was a decision that I made almost immediately. I knew because when you see your best friend in need, you have to step up. It was yani akuna. So in fact, even before surgery, I was the one who was like, when she we were told was. the surgery date, I was the only one uh, screaming in the hospital. In the I was excited. I was like, yes! And my brother is looking at me like, I'm not sure. I was sure. nervous. I was really yeah. nervous that day. He was more nervous yeah, was. about the whole thing. And I think he was nervous because I'm well. So for a donor, you're taking a risk where you're putting your body in the hands of a doctor to remove an organ and to give it to somebody. So for him, it was more a danger, what if things don't go right yeah. for my sister? Yes. So yeah, I never had that moment. The best way to put it is fatigue, you're very extremely tired. And so when I opened my eyes post-transplant, I, I actually felt better. That The minute I opened my eyes, I could tell the difference. You, can, you feel better, you feel like you, you have more energy as you actually heal. And it, it's just, it's different. I don't know how to explain it, but you feel like you've been reborn. That's the best way to put it. You feel that now you can take on the world, and it's amazing. Hey! hey. <laughs> I thought I was hit by a bus. Like, 
you see, that's the thing. Oh Lord. <laughs> and you know, the doctors tell you, the doctors tell you by the way the donor feels even more pain. So you have a lot of pain on your shoulders, on your back, and just yeah. everywhere. I and kept asking for more painkillers. But she <laughs> walked to come see me. Now. You walked yeah. to come see me this, the next yeah, day. Yeah, a few hours she after surgery, I walked to the where to I his was. Room. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you couldn't believe I was standing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even stand till two days <laughs> after. I refused. I refused. <laughs> he refused to greet me. <laughs> I couldn't believe. I was like, go back to bed. <laughs> Yeah, so I was walking. I, wa was. I wanted to be able to see him. Well, first of all, I'll say take each day as it comes. You know, the good thing right now is dialysis is paid for by NHIF for two sessions. So that in itself is hope. So hold on to that until you can find the, the, the funds or even the donor. Because sometimes we, we tend to project and try to think so much of the future that we don't realize that days are going now. So you take each day as it comes, stay positive as much as you can. And you'll hit road bumps. You know, we, we had issues with my, with my donor. Not everything was smooth. So the fact that you, you're going to meet challenges, you need to anticipate those and, and take it. You keep on pushing, keep on trying, and it'll come. that um, donation one is good you know it's something that I think culturally we're very afraid of um, a lot of people are asking me um, are you going to be able to have children how big is this car I mean things that are so petty minor. and minor yeah. compared to saving somebody's yeah. life and so it would be encourage donation especially those who are willing and able to do so there are so many people who, like you've said, who are searching and there are different groups who are looking for donors and unfortunately in our country we don't have those systems put in place where like for instance in America if I want to donate and I don't have a donor there's a portal yes. where I can put my name up and yes. say that I'm interested and they match you to a recipient who might be from a completely different county or state from you exactly. and so those are the things that I'm hoping in the future Kenya will improve on and definitely, you know, encourage people to step up, be courageous, and to donate. The systems, especially they've improved, our medical care has improved, so it's able to do the process swiftly without worrying about life. Wow, uh, that's powerful, because there was one time that job was on dialysis and power went. Yeah. And we panicked because you don't understand when blood is out of his body and yeah. power goes the machine stops and so we were praying there was a backup so we were in a place that had a backup but then you begin to think about people in places where they don't have that option and it's scary so the message to the government is um, healthcare is important when you have a sick nation because he's young he's not even 30 so a lot of times when we think of people who are ill we think of the aging or the old or those who are in maternity care yeah. but you forget those who are in long-term illnesses who need support continuously so it's something to be taken seriously just as important as having water or food to eat. Our healthcare is important, and so the government needs to put it as a priority to stop these strikes. Yeah. Well, to add on to what Nerima has said, actually, when, when power goes, the nurse actually has to crank the machine manually. And that's really important. You know, if you have your blood sitting, it coagulates, it clots in the machine. So that just shows how important these people are, you know. And even in India, the, the doctors are the ones who do the surgery, but the nurses are the ones who, they nurture, they take care of you until you're able. They close, yeah, they, they help you get well, you know. So to me, what I would say is these nurses, they're very important. And without them, I wouldn't even be able to be here, you know. And when I was in dialysis, the dialysis nurses who, they're your best friend. The doctor comes and tells you what to take, but then the nurse is the one who, how are you, how are you feeling, is it good, you know. So that conversation, that one-on-one, -on -one, those are the nurses, they're the extension of the doctor. So they're as important as doctors. That's what I would say. You go first on that one. <laughs> um, 
a lot of things. I have my own organization which is now growing and um, it, it has actually been good. You know, yes. a lot of people were worried that I took about six months out yeah. of work and yeah. People are concerned how you're going to pick your life back, back up, up again and things are actually picking up for me. So for me it would be looking at my company and growing it. Uh, it's called Siasa Place. So engaging young people on electoral processes and the constitution. Well for me it would be improving the whole process of getting a transplant. I, I believe that Kenya we have a, a vacuum especially with in regards to the new law that was passed on on organ donation and getting a recipient I think we need to fine-tune that process and get the the whole infrastructure built so I would like to improve that and start an organization that helps people with getting the transplants and realize that there's hope you know a lot of my friends and people who I didn't know thought that once you get kidney failure it's the end of life it's not. It's the beginning. You, you can actually get out of it. You can do stuff. And I'm here to show them that, yeah, you can. It's, it's the beginning of a new life. That's what I would say. Uh, thank you for having us.